and uh, Hugh Miles has written extensively about Cairo and the revolutions in the Middle East. And let's now get some analysis from him right now. Uh, Mr. Uh, Hugh Miles, welcome to RT. It's good to have you with us. Uh, so why do you think military has launched what is basically a full-on assault on two of the protesters' locations there? Why, why, sorry, can you repeat the question? Why have them? Of course. So, why do you think the military has launched what is a full on assault and why are they doing it now? Well, the military have been uh, preparing for this for some time. There have been leaks about this uh, for several days. Uh, we were expecting it uh, right after the Eid holiday, which was a couple of days ago, but I think the square was just too full of people then. Uh, for it to be safe and they thought that, uh, that maybe they could frighten some people off by leaking uh, about the attacks in advance. Uh, but now the, the military felt it had to make this move because this protest is blocking up a major thoroughfare uh, in the centre of Cairo. It's causing serious uh, disruption. They've been there for, for many, many days. So uh, this is why they, they've gone ahead and taken this, this move. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, that's, that's, uh, that, that's why they've done it. Uh, but still, there's a large number of Islamists in the country and they're not planning uh, to give up. So could, could we see the country slip into a lengthy civil war there? Well, uh, it seems that anything is possible. Egypt is obviously uh, sliding uh, into a very desperate condition and the future is highly uncertain and all the predictions so far about what's going to happen in Egypt have all turned out to be wrong. So uh, it is um, uh, very difficult to say what's going to happen. There's various historical precedents, uh, the Algerian model, the Syrian model, the Iranian model, uh, none of them particularly attractive. Uh, what's clear is that Egypt is a very divided society. Uh, the Islamists, uh, having won the last four democratic elections, or elections, uh, are very popular. They can't just be swept under the table. It's not possible to turn the clock back to the Mubarak era. Uh, and that seems to be the plan at the moment for uh, General Sisi and his backers to try and, and go back to the kind of status quo ante before the 2011 revolution. But I think if that is their plan, they are uh, dreaming because Islamists in Egypt are now used to being free and being able to practice their religion the way they want. Uh, and it's not going to be easy to uh, deny these people what they've become accustomed to. Yeah, you mentioned history here. How come the Egyptian people are letting the army-backed government do what they do now, despite decades spent under military-type rule under Mubarak? Well, the Egyptian people are, are very divided. Uh, and we're not uh, all behind this move uh, at all. I mean, this is a move uh, which is being um, orchestrated, as far as we can tell, by, by General Sisi uh, and uh, the army. Uh, of course, the army have spent decades ruling uh, Egypt and have long been opposed to the Muslim Brotherhood, and uh, they're very separate from the Muslim Brotherhood. They, the army tries to keep the Muslim Brotherhood out of their ranks. Uh, so the army and the security services generally in Egypt are, are very uh, used to dealing with this enemy. So this is kind of back to the old school. It's back to the old rule book uh, in Nasser's time or Mubarak's time that uh, Islamists are a threat to the state and that they can be locked up, uh, repressed, uh, shut down. Uh, and that's what we're seeing now. But it just seems like times have changed since these tactics worked. Uh, and it seems that, uh, that the, the military is, is uh, out of touch with the, um, the, the, the makeup of Egyptian society today, where Islamism has uh, become extremely popular. And what we're really seeing now in, in Egypt is a clash between people who want Islam as their frame of reference against people who want a more secular, kind of European-style frame of reference. And that's a very fundamental uh, divide. It divides families and it divides Egypt, uh, probably roughly half and half, I mean, is, is the best guess. So Egypt has to find a way of squaring this circle. And, and the obvious way is to have some kind of political reconciliation, some kind of power sharing government, where, for example, uh, President Morsi is allowed back, but he has no other Muslim Brotherhood ministers, and Mohammed al baradai is his uh, deputy, and maybe Hamdin al-Sabahi can run this ministry, and Amr Musa can run another ministry. So everyone shares power, like um, as happened in, in South Africa uh, after the end of apartheid. But unfortunately, there's been no indication of any kind of uh, broad, inclusive, uh, re reconciliatory uh, gesture. And what we're seeing instead is that the, the army and its supporters seem to think that they can go this alone without having any Islamists cut in on 
uh, in, into uh, the power sharing at all. Uh, and they, certainly the army has got powerful backers, they've got allies, there are many people who support them and, and would like very much to turn the clock back to the Mubarak era because this model suited uh, many other countries in the region. Egypt was predictable, it was manageable, yes it had problems but it was easy to deal with and the alternative which is an Islamist uh, style government is a huge unknown quantity which frightens uh, just about every country in the region and uh, many countries in the West. Mm. Journalist and author Hugh Miles, thank you very much indeed for your insights, sir. Uh, thank you.